Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today we have another in the mini series focusing on Pro Tools and Melodyne Essential. Both Pro Tools and Pro Tools Ultimate now come bundled with Melodyne Essential. So we got a lot of new users out there. Here's some videos to help get you up to speed, especially if you are new. Now in the previous video, we focused on navigating and editing techniques, and we're gonna go further into that today. I'm gonna to show you some more ways to use some power tools that will allow you to navigate quickly and easily and control where you are, and some really useful editing tools as well. So let's dive right in. And the first thing that I wanna talk about today is selecting notes inside Melodyne. And there's a couple of reasons this will become very important later on, right? When you see these blobs right here, as Melodyne calls them, these are all the orange color. None of them are selected. And if I click on one, it turns red and it is selected. And what's interesting is we get a little couple of windows right here that show you some information about that, what note it is, and in this case, how sharp it is. So if I wanted to select multiple notes, I could just drag a box over it like so. If I had one note selected, I could use the Shift key and go all the way over to the next the next note in line right there. Using the command key, I can deselect or select extra individual notes. If you have one note selected, you can actually use the left and right arrows to travel through all of those notes. And you can even use shift here as well. If I start with this note and hit shift and then click to the right, I can select notes in that direction. Very, very easy way. And again, in a few minutes, I'll show you why selections matter. Okay. Next up is the cycle function. And this is great because this allows us to build a loop, to build a time loop inside Melodyne so that we can focus on just one portion of a song. Now, if you look at your bar and beat markers right here, underneath there is a thin line. Then this is our cycle range. What I can do is I can click in here and make this bar white and drag it out. You'll notice we have our grid on, so this cycle range is following the grid markers. But when this line is white right here, if I click above it, now do you know the sit? Now do you know the sit? Now we get loop playback of just there. When I double click on this white bar again, it turns off. So an easy way to turn that loop function on and off. And again, you can drag these arrows to change where it is or how large it is. You can move the whole thing or change the length of it pretty easily, just like that. Okay, now Melodyne also has an auto scroll feature to control, right? There's a lot of stuff going on in this window right here. We can't always see it all at once. So sometimes there is scroll. And under options, you can turn auto scroll on or off, and this will follow your cursor. You can also control that with this little button down here in the right hand corner that has the two arrows on either side. That is our auto scroll button. You see that white border around it means that it is on. So when I press play, it will scroll. It's governing this land. Just like that. Okay. But here's the thing auto scroll won't work if you have notes selected. If I select all of these notes right here, Melodyne assumes that I want to focus on those notes. So now if you look at the auto scroll button, it's bent, it's broken. Now this is easy to tell that I have notes selected right here because they're red, but if I had moved past there and had navigated past and I can't see those, I might wonder why auto scroll is not working. And that is because this button right here is telling you somewhere notes are selected and that's what's turning off temporarily this auto scroll feature. So now when I press play, stand. we don't get any scroll behavior. An easy way to fix this is just click anywhere in the background and you'll see auto scroll turns right back on just like that. Okay, great. This brings me to one of my favorite features for editing inside Melodyne, which is the macros. And we have three macros in Melodyne. Macro meaning large or overall, the larger sense macros. And these are for editing not just one note, not two, but larger sections of song or even the entire track. And there's three right here. We've got our correct pitch macro, this one right here. We have our quantized time, our timing macro. And we also have our note leveling macro. The note leveling macro is new for Melodyne 5, so I'll show you that in just a sec. Let's start with our correct pitch macro. 
Now what this does is this takes the notes that you have selected, or if you don't have any notes selected, all of the notes in this track, and moves them closer to whatever note that they are closest to. If we open up this window and look at it, we see that there is pitch center and also drift. So this is for adjusting the pitch of the note and then also for adjusting the drift. Drift is like slow wavering on and off pitch over time as opposed to the faster wavering, right, which would be like similar to vibrato. Now there's a button here for snap to chord scale. So if this is selected as you alter this macro, those notes will jump to the, score, the chord scale. If they're not, it just behaves in a chromatic manner. So I'm going to turn this off and show you how that works. If I adjust this right here, you're going to notice that all of these notes start to move closer to the note that Melodyne thinks that they were closest to, the, the original intended note in the first place. And I can shove that all the way to 100%, and every note will jump right exactly to another note. Watch what happens if I click, if I click Snap to score, Chord Scale. We see that some of those change right there, right? Because this track has chords and a scale within it, and that totally changes what notes are going to be available for Melodyne. Let's turn this off, and I can also again change that drift. Drift might be something that you'll have to experiment with and see, because again, it's changing that slow pitch over time, but you can definitely find a spot that fits and works better. Okay, that's our pitch macro. Let's move over here to our timing macro. Timing macro is good, and it's based normally around the groove, and you can see right here that it's based around, we've got quarter note, quarter note, triplet, eighth note, and then also an auto feature. This is where Melodyne will guess about how things should quantize. But as I adjust the intensity, let's move this to quarter note right here. As I adjust the intensity, we'll see these notes start to move. And because I don't have a selection made in this track right now, this is doing this to every note in this track. If we had, if I were to hit cancel and just select these notes, when I make an adjustment on the quarter note grid, only those notes will move and stretch. None of the other notes in the song move. Okay, now you'll notice that include notes edited manually is not available right here. This is key. Melodyne generally assumes that if you have already moved some notes around, those notes are where you want them. So in this particular case, that is not available. I haven't moved any notes yet. Let me give you an example right here. Let me take one note and just move it a little bit. Now, when I go over here to my timing macro, I can say include notes edited manually or not. This way, if you've already moved some notes and you just want to take the rest of the notes in the song, you can move them and you can decide whether or not you want to include those notes. Okay, great. Now, lastly, we come to our leveler macro. And this, in this case, the selection is very important because the leveler macro only works on whatever tracks you current, whatever blobs you currently have selected. So you have to have something selected. And what it does is it looks at all of the notes selected and finds a medium volume, right? Let me select uh, a couple of notes right here. I'm going to take this note, which is decent size and shift click to here. So we get a few louder notes and a few softer notes as well. What this does is it looks at the notes you have selected, finds a median volume, and then gives you a scale for all of the notes that are lower than that median volume and a scale for all of the notes that are louder than that. In this case, we've got a pretty quiet note right here. So watch what happens when I bring this up. It's going to bring this up towards the medium volume right there. And if I bring this down, we probably won't see as much of a change, although one of those notes might get a little bit smaller. But the other ones are all pretty close to size, so they really aren't the medium. They're not going to be changed that much right there. Again, this is heavily dependent upon what you have selected, but it's very useful for picking a line in the song and evening it out. I find it to be much faster and easier than individual clip gain on certain words. Okay, great. Now, this brings me to another thing that I absolutely love about Melodyne, which is the undo feature. You can use Command-Z and standard undo inside Melodyne, and it will just go in order. Every time you hit Command-Z, it will undo the previous step. But sometimes we wish to do or undo 
one action without affecting some others that we've done right there. And Melodyne is great at that, right? Let me give you an example. I'm going to take this note right here and alter the pitch of it. And I'm also going to alter the timing of it as well. Let me just change that and alter the timing. And what we've got right now is now I can right click on this and from your context menu, restore original. I could undo the pitch changes or the pitch center or just the timing or undo all changes. If I just want to undo timing, I can do that without affecting the pitch. This is really, really useful if you've made some changes and you love them and you want to undo some things without undoing others. It's absolutely phenomenal. Very, very great. Okay. Now, Melodyne does have quick keys, and if you want to be a power user in any software, you have to know the quick keys. And you can get to those quick keys from settings right here. If you go to settings, we will see oh, preferences, and inside preferences at this top menu, there are shortcuts. And what we've got right here is a selection of shortcuts that are available, right? For example, we see toggle cycle mode, command shift L. Okay, great. That's what we saw earlier. You see the loop, the cycle right here. If I hit Command Shift L, I can turn that on and off, just like so. Shift Command L turns that on and off. Now, within our quick keys, not only do we have that, if I wanted this to be something different, I could double click in here and maybe I want this to be Shift Option Command B. Great, now that's my cycle mode. Very easy to write in your own quick keys within Melodyne. And there's even one more feature, which is you could go in and choose the Melodyne quick keys with earlier versions of Melodyne, or that most closely align to whatever DAW you're using. Lots of control with your quick keys right here. One last thing I want to talk about today. I know you love tuning in to see these videos and to see me and to see if I only own one t-shirt that's in different colors. However, sometimes you're going to want to find an answer that is not available in my YouTube videos right here. And I want to show you for a moment the online Melodyne website, uh, the manual, excuse me, that's online. It's incredibly useful. It's probably my favorite manual online, and I am a huge manual nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff. And here's why. You can very easily go to whatever edition of Melodyne you have. Let's say you have Essential, and you're working with Pro Tools. You can select that. You can choose whatever you want, and this menu will now change. Maybe you're working in Pro Tools. And now we see all the choices right here. And this menu is, and this manual now only has information that is valid and useful to you. I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks a lot.